And that's why when we were in sin, we didn't know anything about God. When we got born again, we were set free. God said, I break your shackle, I break chains, I break prison gates. That's when we were able to. So God doesn't want us to be in bondage. So God wants us to love him, to put him first, and to trust him, you know, to trust him, to have a sweet fellowship with him. Remember, I was a sweet, sweet aroma fellowship. Like I always remember my late father, every morning when he wake up, he would be singing. That's why I, this, uh, sister, she sings a lot. She worship a lot. It's a very good thing to wake up in the night you can worship you can pray so god wants us to have fellowship with him either by lying down and be quiet before god at the presence of god is a form of fellowship too by reading your bible by keeping his commandments by doing what he's asking you to do by loving him by sweet uh, song and and, and and aroma even the bible says we speak we, we we praise in spirit you know so god wants us to have uh, that sweet fellowship with him to walk in his righteousness and holiness, to keep his commandments, to come to salvation through his only begotten son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and to believe unto the end that Jesus is the Savior, you know. So God's, that's God's thought towards us. And now we can go into the scripture. You see that God had beautiful, beautiful thoughts towards his children. And when I talk about the children of God, God is the creator of every human being. But when I talk about the children, I'm talking about born again Christians. Born again Christian, baptized, filled of the Holy Spirit, children of God, led by the Spirit of God. So those one, that's when I say children, you know, because not everyone is a child of God. God is the creator of everyone. Even the Jewish people, they were the chosen nation of God. But for them to come to heaven too, they have to come through Jesus Christ. Everybody has to come through Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter whether you are Jew, that were chosen by God, nation chosen by God, Israel, with covenant to Abraham. It doesn't matter whether you are a, 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 a Gentile like us. It doesn't matter whether you're a Greek. It doesn't matter whether you are born, born, a, a free or bond. Everyone has to come through Jesus to come into heaven. You see, so when you are set free by Jesus, you are born again, then you become a child of God. So it doesn't matter whether you're a Jew, you're a Gentile, you're a Greek, you're born, you're free. You see, so everything is through Jesus. Hallelujah. So now, and I told you I have a, a message for the sinners that God is calling all sinners also. He's calling all of them unto repentance. He doesn't want them to die and perish in their sins. And God is warning the whole world to turn to him because he will judge the world and he will judge all nations at the appropriate time that he has chosen, that he has appointed unto himself. And only him knows that day. Hallelujah. So now if we go to the scripture, if we go to the Psalm chapter uh, 92, Psalm 92, so the topic tonight again is God's thought toward us. God's thought towards us is saints. His saints, which are saints, is the same thing as the children of God, the born again Christian. So God talks to us. All. You see that it's a beautiful, beautiful everything that I spoke to you tonight. That it's a beautiful thought that God has for His children. Beautiful. I wish that a lot of Christians can remember this, so maybe it will make them to 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 draw more closer and closer unto God. God has good, good stuff for His children. Good, good. You remember when the Bible said, "And uh, the, uh, I have not seen, neither has ear heard, neither has heart." known compre who can come hard can comprehend what god have for those that love him for those that love god you know so god have good stuff for his children you know so hallelujah both right now and for eternity but the greatest one is the eternity hallelujah so psalm chapter uh, 92 92 92 92 Okay, I read from verse 1 to 9. Hallelujah. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn song, sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O oh Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. You see what I was saying to you? Remember I mentioned when I was talking, uh, uh, break it down, I said God has good thing for us, a good thought about us, 
I said you also about his loving kindness, and the Bible mentioned his loving kindness. I say about the gladness. God wants us to be glad, you know. And I say about also a triumph, you know, how God wants us to, to, to get to be delivered, you no know, deliverance, you no know, to be in victory, you know. And also, and that's what uh, the Bible is saying. And also that he said, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. So the thoughts of God for his children, for the saints, is very deep. And when I, when I, you see, I listed all those things. He wants us to be at peace, at rest. He wants to establish us. He wants us to be in goodness, joy, freedom. He wants us to prosper, not only financial prosperity, but he wants us to prosper in our soul, in our spirits. And he wants us to prosper in our health both physical and mental health. And God wants us also to prosper, our family to prosper in whatever we do in the ministry. You see, God wants that for us. And he wants friendship with us. You see, and he wants us to love him. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh Lord, how great are thy works and thy thoughts are very deep. A British man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. You see, the Bible is saying a British man and those who are, are foolish men, you know, worldly men, you know, they do not know. Brutish means uh, uh, like a brit beast behavior, violent behavior. So a brutish man who, is a, is a, who has a beast behavior or a violent man, knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand these things. This thing that I listed, that I was saying, that God wants for us, they do not understand it because they do not have the spirit of God. They are not being set free. They are in the world, in sinful lifestyle. You know, so when the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. You see, they shall be destroyed forever if they do not repent. Remember when I was giving a message that God wants the sinners and the world to repent because they have picked a day to judgment, you know. And here that's what the Bible says: when the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, they prosper. It means they prosper, they have money, they are in government, they are governors, they are presidents, they are politicians, they are this, they are that, you know, and people, they have houses, they have aeroplane, you know. But it is that they shall be destroyed forever when the time of judgment comes. So don't look at people just because they have aeroplane, they are very rich, means they know God. No, the richest people in this world don't know God. They are not Christians. So riches does not mean holiness. And riches does not mean people who know God. Yes, God blesses people, his children. There are children of God who are very rich, who are millionaire, maybe even billionaire, you know. But the richest people in this world, they don't know God. They don't serve God. You can see the evil they do with their money. You can see politicians, the evil they do in their nations, different nations, all kind of evil they do. They join hand with Satan to fight against God, to go against God. You know that these people don't know God. No one knows God can fight against God, except if they do it ignorantly. And if the Holy Spirit is in them, he will reveal to them that you are fighting against your father. That's why Jesus said, a house divided, can he stand? No. When people say, oh, Lord Jesus, his disciple told him, they are casting out demons in your name and they are not part of us. No, he said, no. He said, let them do it. In which name? In my name. Which means they are of me, you know? So that's why when I see people, this denomination nonsense, they do. God does not know denomination when he looks down from heaven. God just knows children who have his Holy Spirit, children who, is, who are going to be prepared for the day of rapture. Whether they be alive, they will be at rapture. If Jesus comes when they are alive, whether they be dead, they will resurrect from their grave. Jesus don't know if this uh, Anglican, this Catholic, this all this denomination when jesus there was one church when the church of christ was brought in jerusalem in israel it was one church so the ones that have his holy spirit that's how they will rapture not by your denomination you see so now but thou lord are most high forever for lo, thy enemies O lord for lo, thy enemies shall perish and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And God will anoint his people always with fresh oil. So God talks to us, us is big, is deep. You see how the Bible says that the thoughts and thy thoughts are very deep. You know, so I wish a lot of Christians, people will know this, you know, that God loves his own. He loves his children. It's true. 
That's why I spoke about two levels of love one time. Jesus died for the whole sinners, for the whole world. He came for the sinners, he died for the sinners. That's one level of love. But those sinners, even though Jesus died for sinners, if they don't repent of their sin, they die in their sin, they will not enter into heaven. That's one level of love. But that's another level of love of those who repented before Jesus and have made up their mind and sacrificed. Yes, I want to follow God. That's, that's another level of, of love with God. But God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting. That's the general law for everyone to come unto repentance. But that's another level of love for those who have accepted that first love, that love of giving Jesus Christ to everyone, that through Jesus we may be saved. So when you do that, that's one love then you come where you have relationship and you have made up your mind that yes, I want to follow God. And you want to follow God. That's, that's another special level of love. So people always get it missed. People who are born again, who love God, when they die, they cannot go to hell. They can't go to hell. Those who accepted Jesus, they gave their life to Jesus, they get born again, they accepted God, they accepted the word of God, they decide to follow God. When they die, for sure they will go to heaven. But those who choose not even to repent to come to Jesus, even though God loved them and Jesus died for them, they can't make it to heaven. It's very, the only way a Christian will not go to heaven if he come to Christ and turn back, and turn back and go back to the world and start walking against God. That's a different story. And start doing what God said we shouldn't be doing without repentance also. And die without repentance. That's when they can't make it. Or a, a, a Christian, normal life Christian, who, are, who accepted Christ, who has chosen that, yes, God, I want to follow you. Jesus, I want to follow you. This pattern, I want to follow you. They won't miss the road. Hallelujah. So now, if we go to the book of, uh, the book of uh, Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, I believe, yeah. Jeremiah 29, 11. Hallelujah. Blessed be God forever and ever. As, as I said tonight, our topic is God's thought towards us, towards the Christian, his children, the saints. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You hear? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You remember I, I listed that. I talk about goodness. I talk about his, his loving kindness, his mercy, his grace, his joy, freedom. I talk about for our souls and spirits to prosper. And I, and I gave so many, about five types of run, uh, five different levels of prosperity, not just in finances, for, uh, for, for our souls and spirits, you know, to prosper. Our bodies, mental, ministry, family, whatever we put our hands in. And I talk about peace, you know, thought of peace, rest. I talk about peace, rest, no fear, you know. So, and that's why the Bible says, for I know the Lord God, you know, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And I give you all they are listed up. So that's what God's thought, to walk with us unto the end, till we go to our grave. So when we die, we die in Christ. And if we are fortunate, if God, if Jesus come in our own time to be able to rapture, to be caught up in the clouds with him after the dead in Christ falls, because the dead in Christ falls, those who died in Christ, they will be the first one who will be caught up in the cloud with Christ when he comes back. Then those Christians who are his saints who are living, then after the, the grave opened, those who are caught up with him, then, so these are the promises of God. And, 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 and that's just to give an expected end. You know, so not just about what he does for us here, about deliverance, about protecting us. It's our shield. It's our buckler. 
He's our defender. He's our healer. He's the one that feeds us. He's the one that protects us. He's our everything. He's the rock of our salvation. But beyond that, even the of eternity, that's the ultimate goal. That's why Jesus said, I go in my father's house. There are many mansions. And I will come again for you. So there are great promises of God. And there are great good thoughts. These are good thoughts of God towards us. And that's why our Christian people, we have to grasp this and walk in these glorious promises of God. And not mind what people think. They like us, they don't like us, they talk good about us, they talk bad about us. That does not mean anything. It does not mean anything. And look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You know? So now if we go to um, the book of uh, 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 Psalm, chapter 100, verse 5. Psalm 105. Psalm chapter 100, verse 5. Hallelujah. He said, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. You see? Remember I mentioned mercy also. It always, when we fall, God have mercy. Every day he renew our daily mercies for us. You see? When God start work with us, he want to finish it. Except if you don't want God to finish it. That's a different level. But God will do his own part. And it's up to an individual to do their own part. So, that's what I'm saying. It's a very good God. He has goodness, joy, freedom. He said, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. And when God gives us word of prophecy, some will come very fast like this. Very fast. And some will take time. But even though it tarry, it shall surely come to pass. The word of God that comes out, the true prophecy that comes from the word from the mouth of God shall surely come to pass. No word of God can go back void unto him. The word that he speaks always prosper in what God has spoken about. So if God give you a word of prophecy, some might come quick, quick, quick like this. I've experienced that. And some might tarry. But it shall surely come to pass. If he give you vision, my tarry, but shall surely come to pass. So these are the good thoughts of God. He's working out things for us. He's moving things, shifting things. So we have to have patience and we have to trust him and love him. There's God that can be trusted. It's not a pastor. A man can disappoint you anytime. A woman can disappoint you. Be sure of all kind of things. We know all kind of things that is going on in our churches today. But look beyond that. It's Jesus who gave you salvation, not pastor, not man, not bishop, not pope, not this, not that. It's Jesus who gave you salvation. When I, that's why I told my wife, we always talk. I, when I gave my life to Christ, who was there? It was me and him at that night. And the rest was history. So it's all about Jesus. Focus on Jesus. I told people, focus on Jesus. A lot of people focus on religion. They focus on pastors. They focus on, on denominations. And they miss the point. We need to focus on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The one that will never fail us. That have great promises for us, both here and in eternity. Hallelujah. So if we go to the book of, uh, if we go to the book of Isaiah 38, the book of Isaiah chapter 38. Hallelujah. Blessed be God forever and evermore. And blessed be Holy Spirit of the living God forever and evermore. Amen. Blessed be our Lord Jesus Christ forever and evermore. Uh, Isaiah chapter 30, 30, from verse 13 to 19. I read quickly. Hallelujah. God's thought towards us. God's thought towards us. That's what we're talking about tonight. So we have to remind ourselves that God has good thoughts for us. You know, we should not worry what's going on in this world. Hallelujah. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. You see, we have to wait for God. You give us mercy. He has uh, is gracious unto us. He's gracious always unto his children. 
you know. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. And when he shall hear it, he will answer thee. So in the times of trouble even, and the time is coming, there shall be no weep, no death. God promised us in that new heaven, new heaven and the new earth, the new Jerusalem, where there is no more death, there's no more pain, there's no more sickness. You don't need doctors, you don't need lawyers, you don't need this, you don't need that. There's no more death. There will be no more demons, there will be no more Satan. There will be no more wicked people of this world. All these people who are blood-loving blood, uh, blood uh, loving people, who have shed so many blood, who have destroyed so many people in different ways, as well as the politicians, they shall not be in that part of that kingdom to come, that new Jerusalem to come, except if they repent before they die and quickly make it good before God. So that those are the things, great thoughts, both here, right now, and for eternity. So now if we go to the book of, uh, book of, um, let me see. Let's go, go, go to the book of uh, John, John 3, 16. John 3, 16 and 36. Everybody knows John 3, 16 on the head, so. But I'll say, uh, read it out. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Remember, I was talking about one level of love, general for everyone. And there's another level for those who have covenanted themselves. God said, I love my own. You know, I love Abraham. Those who have made up their mind that, yes, this Jesus a lot of people don't want to be part of Jesus, even the churches today. But this Jesus, I want to follow. I want to follow this Jesus. I want to serve this Jesus. I want to walk with this Jesus. Irrespective, today I have a lot of money in my pocket. Today, oh, I'm feeling good. I'm not feeling good. But this Jesus, I just want to follow this Jesus. Great, great, great. This is another level, God. Another level. I spoke about... Uh, two levels of love. So this one is general, one level. There's another level for those who are covenanted unto God. So now if we go to verse 38, 36, I believe. Yeah, 36. He said, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth in him. You see, those that believe in God that believe the Son of God, which is Jesus Christ, they have life, eternal life. And that's one of the good thoughts, thoughts of God towards us. Eternal life, the promise of eternal life. And Jesus defined the book of uh, 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 John. He defined, uh, I think John 17, something like that. He defined eternal life. He said, what is eternal life? He said, eternal life is to love God. The true is to love the true God and Jesus whom God have sent. Is the loving of the true God, the only living God, and Jesus whom God have sent. That is eternal life. And those Christians, those children of God who are pursuing this lineage, those are those promises of God of eternal life shall come upon them. Hallelujah. So if you go to the book of uh Romans, Romans chapter, Romans chapter 11, 31 to 36. And these free gifts of God, you know, it's free. We don't pay anything for it. We don't have to, we can't pay money to go to heaven. Nothing. The Bible says here, because a lot of Christians think, oh, if I give money, to pastor, if I give money, if I give money, so they will make it to heaven. But well, that's what God is gonna do. Be happy. Eternity is not through giving money to anything. It's a free gift that God gave to everybody, everyone. But we give. We love to give, but we give as a free will offering and as it come in our spirit. 
or as the Holy Spirit instructs us, we don't give to try to impress people or to think we can get favor from God. A lot of people run around to satisfy a man, satisfy a woman, satisfy this pastor, satisfy this bishop, satisfy. That's not of God. You are that's putting yourself into bondage. Apostle Paul says, after Jesus has set you free, do not be entangled again into the bondage of men. I love to give, but I give as a free will, as it comes in my heart. For put that for God love joyful givers, or as the Holy Spirit in, in, uh, in, uh, instructs me, and you give with wisdom. So now the Bible said in Romans 11 from chapter 11 from 31, even so, yeah, even so, have this also not to believe that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. For God had, had concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who had known the mind of the Lord, or who had been his counselor? Who had known the mind of the Lord? None. Who had been the counselor of God? None. None. Or who had first given to God? Who had first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and all and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God owns everything in the world. They tell people sometimes in churches, oh, bring this money, bring this God, we love you, this, that. No. Do according to when I first came to Christ, I didn't know all these things. But I thank God from pastors that I'm able to uh, uh, who like uh, took, took me like a son able to explain these things to me and after i see in the word of god too is god we supposed to be pleasing not men anyone who is pleasing pastors i'm sorry for you that person is a man pleaser we have to respect pastors bishop pope respect everyone on earth be rich person be the poorest person be homeless be poor educated or uneducated we are to respect people but we are not to be men pleasers and worship people. We are to worship God, and only God must be worshipped. Whether a pastor like you, doesn't like you, that has nothing to do with your eternity. He's not the one who is going to determine if you go to heaven or not. It's Jesus Christ. And based on your service before Jesus. But a lot of people don't know that. They think some men are the one who determine them going to heaven. You'll be shaking, 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 pleasing, pleasing, running after people. Instead of running after God and shaking after God. So God's thoughts towards us. God wants us to love him, to serve him, to worship him in spirit and in truth. So my brothers and sisters, if we go to the book of uh, uh, book of Acts chapter 17. Now this is a message to the sinners. God's message to the sinners and also to the world. This that I'm going to read tonight, uh, I, I spoke, the topic tonight is about God's thoughts towards us, his children, all these great good thoughts, both here in this present world and in eternity. But now, I told you, I said, I'm going to uh, also give a message of God to the sinners and to the world also tonight. So, and this is the message of God to, to the world and to the sinners. Acts chapter 17. I take it from verse 28. Take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseas to feed. This is the ministers, to the minister, this first message. And made you oversee, overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. You see, when people worship pastors and worship bishop and all this, you hear God. Jesus is the one that purchased us, not men. That's why some people get it wrong. No pastor died for anyone. I did not die for anyone. Jesus is the one that died for me. I cannot save anyone. I cannot even save myself. It's Jesus that can save me and everybody else. 
So that's why the Bible says also, you take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers. This is to the pastors. I made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. So it's Jesus Christ who purchased the people. The people in the churches belong to Jesus. They do not belong to pastors or bishops or pope. They belong to Jesus Christ who purchased them with his own blood. And I myself belong to Jesus who purchased me with his own blood. So now for all, now this is for the world and the sinners. Oh, okay, still for the pastor, he hasn't got to there. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter into you, not sparing the flock. This is what Apostle was talking about. Apostle Paul, that he knows after his departure, like what we see today in our churches, grievous wolves. When Jesus said, raving wolves, raising, raving, raving wolves in sheep's clothing. There are many today in our churches. So he said, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the, the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to, to draw disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone. One night and day with tears. So Apostle Paul was warning was warning, was warning about these things to come. So now I go into this is uh, uh, for the for for what happens in our churches. Now I go to the to the wall now and to the sinners. Okay, for as much then, uh, uh, um, let me ask chapter seventeen from verse 29, 17, 29. This is the message to the wall and to the sinners. For as much, from verse 29, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto God, unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. God is talking about those who worship idols or these graven images. That Godhead is not like that. And, and, and the times of this ignorance, and, and, and the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now, commanded all men everywhere to repent. You see, this is message to the sinners and to the world. God is saying, now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Why? Because he had appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. By that man whom he had ordained, whereof he had given assurance unto all men in that he had raised him from the dead. And who is that man? our Lord Jesus Christ. God raised him from the dead to confirm again to the world. So now if you go to the book of uh, First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 2, 4, 4 to 6. Hallelujah. Bless every God forevermore. So God has good things, good stuff for us, his children. And God also is giving messages tonight also to the sinners and the world to repent to come into salvation for tomorrow is not promised hallelujah okay first timothy chapter 2 verse 4 to 6 who will have all men to be saved who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth you see god wants all men all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. There is one God and one mediator between God and man and men. Again, there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due season. So Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all of us. He was, he was the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of this world. And this is what I'm saying, that he's the one who purchased us. People are supposed to focus on Jesus, but they focus on men and women. 
He is the one who purchased us. He is the one who brings us to heaven. No man can stop you from going to heaven. Only Jesus can bring us to heaven. And that's why we must focus on Jesus. It is good to go to church on Sunday, to have general congregation, uh, 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 worship. But the fellowship between you and God, I think I, it's not part of what I'm re teaching tonight, but I will go there to show you. It comes so that God wants us to have good relationship with him. He wants us to love him. He wants us to have intimacy. Hallelujah. So in doing those things, all these promises will come unto us. Hallelujah. Second Peter. Let's go to the book of Second Peter. Chapter 3, verse 9. Hallelujah. Blessed be God forever and evermore. Okay, say, not rendering evil for evil, or not or railing, but controlized blessing. Yeah, call or that it should be. Okay. Okay. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing. But contrawise blessing, knowing that ye are therefore on therefore unto call that ye should inherit a blessing. You see? God wants us to be blessed, he wants to bless us. You see? And verse 1 says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against is the, it's against them that do evil against the wicked you see the eyes of god that's why god answer our prayer the eyes of god are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers but the face of the lord is against them that do evil so now if we go to second peter chapter three second peter chapter three okay oh this is first peter okay Oh, sorry. Okay, Second Peter chapter three verse nine. Okay, this okay. All right, Second Peter chapter three verse nine. Okay. The Lord. Let me take you from verse eight. You say, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing: that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Our own thousand years is one day for God. One day for God is 1,000 years for us. The Lord is not slack, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But his strong suffering to us, to us what? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That all should come to, the, to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Where in the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. And the elements shall, be, shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we are according to his promise. Look for the new heavens and a new earth. They are in dwelleth righteousness. Remember when I was telling you that a new heaven, the promise of the new heaven, a new Jerusalem and a new earth, where there is no more tears. There is no more devil. There's no more demons. There's no more evil people. You do not need a doctor. You do not need a lawyer. You do not need a social worker. You do not need anything. All you need is God. And you become an immortal person immortal person you become a spiritual entity a spiritual body and you live for god with god forever and evermore and i count that the long suffering of our god is salvation even as our beloved brother paul also according to the wisdom given unto him i written unto you you see so my brothers and sisters there are great promises of God over our lives. God thoughts towards us is good, is excellent. And that's why tonight I dissect it and I put it out that this God that we serve is not a vain God. It's not a vain God. If Jesus did not die for us, our sins are still upon us. 
If he did not resurrect, our sins are still upon us. When he died for us, he, he was resurrected on the 